Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a while, but I am planning on uploading more consistently. I decided to start a series on my channel about personal finances. I am very passionate about personal finances because I feel like it's a great way to reach goals. Um, if you're interested in learning how to create a beginner budget, please keep watching. Okay guys, so let's just go ahead and jump right in. Step one is going to be doing your research. And by research, I don't mean going to the library. Don't worry, you don't have to read anything. Um, the only thing that you're gonna have to do is uh, go through all your bank statements, go through your credit card statements if you have a credit card, um, and go ahead and get everything together as far as amounts due, uh, due dates, and if there's like minimum payments. Um, you want to get all that information down. Your budget is going to be broken into three sections. The first section is necessities. So that's going to be things like your house payment, your electricity, your water, your groceries, um, your gas, your car payment, the things that you need to, you know, live your life um, that are essential. Um, the second section is going to be obligations. This is going to cover things like student loans, credit cards, child support, um, if you have court payments, anything like that, you're gonna include this in this section. And then your last section is gonna be your discretionary spending, which is basically your fun money, um, what you use to like eat out, if you have any subscription services uh, like Netflix or Hulu. And then it's also going to include things like, you know, date night, when you want to go shopping, uh, anything like that, that's going to be your discretionary spending or what me and Tony call it is our entertainment fund. Tony's in the military. Um, if you don't know, he's active duty. Um, he's in the Air Force and uh, military members get paid twice a month. They get paid on the 1st and on the 15th. And basically it just gets split in half. So you get paid the same 1st and the 15th. If you do not get paid, the same amount every single time. It's best if you get a average amount. So go back, look at your paychecks and average it out. Make sure that you're averaging more on the low end because you don't want to account for money that you might not get. Um, so things like bonuses, stuff like that, things that are one time only, don't include that in here. Um, we'll talk about it in a later video on how to handle things like that. But you do wanna get an average of, let's say your last six months of pay. That way we can get a realistic number on what you should be getting paid every single month. Okay guys, so for step number two, we're gonna go ahead and start filling out the budget. Um, now that you have everything listed by due date and it's all nice and neat, you have your due dates, your minimum payments due, who it's going to and all that, you wanna go ahead and put it into your sections. So Tony and I get paid twice a month well, I'm a stay-at-home mom. Um, Tony gets paid twice a month, but we call it our money. It's it's our money. So we get paid twice a month on the 1st and the 15th. And um, from there, we go ahead and organize our bills so that we make sure that we're not overloading one paycheck and then, you know, have late fees or anything like that waiting for us when the second paycheck comes around. So you want to go ahead and start doing that. If you do figure out that you have too much on one of your paychecks, if you get paid, you know, weekly or bi-weekly, then you might want to call your creditor or your, if you have a credit card or your loans or um, even, you know, your electricity water company, they should be willing to change that for you. Okay guys, so for step number two, we're going to go ahead and fill out our budget. By this point, you should have all of your information nicely written out by due date and amount that's due, whether it's the full amount or minimum amount, if it's a loan or a credit card, you want to have all that listed nicely and organized by the due date. And now we're going to go ahead and fill it into our budget. Uh, I did leave a link down below of a beginner budget. It's nothing fancy, but it's something that helps that helped us organize our finances once we got married. Um, it helped us figure out how much money we had coming in, how much money we were wasting, um, and just, you know, had nothing to show for it. So um, I went ahead and linked that down below. I will be filling it out at the end of the video. So if you want to stay till the end of the video, I'm going to be filling that out with you guys and giving you some more information about how to estimate 
you know, how much you should allocate for groceries or for eating out. Um, but okay, so now that we have everything set up, everything um, into the budget, you want to tally it up and you want to subtract it for how much income you have. Okay, so for step three, we're going to go ahead and do our adjustments. So if you notice that you are in the negative or that you have a lot of money left over, that's amazing. Um, but let's tackle if you're in the negative. So if you are in the negative, we're going to have to go back. The easiest thing that there is going to be to adjust is going to be your discretionary spending. So um, if you need to cut back some on your discretionary spending, you want to go ahead and adjust that at this point. Um, if it's still not enough, if you're still in the negative, that's fine. Like I said, step three is all about adjustments and you're going to practice this every single time you get paid. I've been following a budget since I was 16. Um, that's when I got my first job and that's when I made my first budget. Uh, my mom taught me to be very money conscious at a very young age. I did put myself through college. I saved uh, $20,000 by the time I was 23. So um, those are gonna be later videos. If you're interested, please give this video a thumbs up. If you wanna see that video on how to save your first $20,000, give this video a thumbs up, comment down below. Um, but for now, we're gonna move on to step four, which is the most important step, and that's executing your budget, sticking to your budget, sticking to your plan. So many people view budgets as something that's negative, but it's not. I view them as something that's positive, as a roadmap to getting to your goals. So if you can stick to your budget, that is amazing. I am so proud of you. Um, please comment back. Please let me know how you're doing. If you need any more advice or tips on how to stick to your budget, I am going to be making a video on that for next week. But um, if you have any individual questions, comment down below. I will make sure to get back to every single one of you. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Uh, this next section is going to be me filling out our budget um, with real numbers, numbers that we had when we lived in Arkansas. Um, living over here in Germany, it's a little bit different, not very realistic because of the fact that we are living in Germany. Um, Tony's pay is very different over here. Uh, so I'm going to be using our budget from Arkansas, but I'm going to go ahead and fill that out with you guys on video so that you can see how I do it step by step. And um, I'm going to be using that, that one that I linked down below for you. Hey guys, so this is our budget from early 2017. Here I'm listing Tony's income. There's a second portion that has my income. We do handle our finances separately, so this is what works out for us. If you are a single income family, just go ahead and put everything on one spreadsheet. Uh, but here I'm just listing our bills, our home mortgage, heating, internet. Groceries is a big one. Groceries is the one that a lot of people don't know how much to allocate. The rule of thumb is to do $100 per family member per month. So for Tony and I, that would be $200. But we do spend a little bit more than that because we try not to eat out so much. So we went ahead and allocated $120 instead of the $100. Um, so we're going to keep going. Gas, dog food. For our entertainment fund, um, instead of you know breaking it down, we just do one single section we know that all of our eating out our date nights our online shopping all of it is going to be coming out of that one section and we know that once that money is gone that's it we just stop spending money until we get paid again okay so this just moves on to our savings and then i'm going to go ahead and start inputting our actual cost compared to what we projected or what we planned for so our groceries, um, we spent slightly less that week. Um, our gas, we also spent slightly less. Uh, we try to fill up like every single week, um, but you know, gas fluctuates. So um, we spent slightly less and it just kind of evens out like over time. Uh, for techs, we did have a vet visit. So instead of being what we thought it was going to be, which is just $35, it was $115 because we weren't planning that vet visit. He ended up having an ear infection. Um, so we had to take care of that. And then, uh, of course, our entertainment fund, we used up all of that money. Surprise, surprise. And our savings. So normally here, we will save that $700 because we try to do that as much as possible. 
but um, we were gonna be $25 short if we did that because of Texas vet visit. So we went ahead and just, instead of saving the 700, we saved 675 or even again, we zeroed out our budget, which is the goal. So even though we did have an unexpected um, bill, we were still able to take care of it because we just went ahead and took it from the amount that we usually save. So here I'm gonna move on to the 15th. So you'll probably notice that I do this home mortgage twice on the 1st and the 15th. That's because we pay our mortgage in two parts. Our regular payment is $926 but we do pay more than that so that we can put more money towards the principal and also to pay less interest. Even if it's only 15 days, it's still less interest. Um, I'll go over more about principal payments and how to pay your house quicker in another video. Um, if you do wanna hear about that, please leave a comment down below. If you wanna hear anything about the house buying process, um, leave me a comment down below and I'll reply and I might even cover it in a separate video if I get enough interest. So here, again, I'm just listing all of our bills, um, insurance, you know, and then the regular things like grocery, gas, uh, dog food, entertainment, and savings. We never leave savings out. Savings is very important to us. If you're not at a point where you can save money right now, that's fine, but once you do get to that point, it's very important that you do start saving money. So you'll notice here that we do have some money left over. And once that accumulates to be a bigger amount, let's say $100 or $200, we use that and we treat ourselves. That's our little incentive to spend less money so that we can make a more expensive purchase that is still within our budget. So this is a look at how we allocate my income. This is, again, from 2017. So I am responsible for my car payment, gas. I do have an entertainment fund, as well as an amount that I set aside to savings. That leaves me with a really small amount left over, but it's fine. I usually can stick to my budget very well. Okay, so here we're moving on to my second paycheck which covers our cell phone bill, um, gas, entertainment, and Amazon Prime, as well as Spotify Premium. We, we do take advantage of the student discount because Tony is a student. He's taking college classes in addition to being a active duty military member. So I'm really proud of him for that. Uh, but we do take advantage of those discounts, of course. So Amazon Prime for students is $60 a year. So we just set aside $5 a month. And when it comes due, we just pay it out of there. Um, and then at the bottom, you're going to see here that I do have our savings goals. Uh, at this time, I we still didn't even know that I was going to be pregnant. We were planning it. We prayed for Samuel. So Thank you, God, for answering our prayers. Um, but we were saving for any expenses that come along with having a baby, which um, was my maternity leave, and then um, any of his needs, for example, buying a car seat, buying a stroller, buying a crib, buying all those things. It kind of adds up really quickly, especially when you're starting from scratch. So um, we did set aside money for that. And then I'm always saving for vacation. We love to vacation and just, you know, enjoy our lives. Um, even though we do save a lot of money, we do take time to go on vacations and that's what makes it worth it for us. Hey guys, so real quick, I wanted to go over Tony's savings goals as well. Um, he is into uh, restoring our 78 Camaro as well as woodworking. Those are his two hobbies. So we do put money aside for that. And we also are saving towards our for forever home. The home that we are living in at this time in 2017 is not our forever home. It's not in Texas and we do want to go back to Texas. So we do have that in mind as well. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. That's fine. I'm not going to get offended. I want feedback. I want to know what I'm doing right. I want to know what I'm doing wrong. So um, 
I hope that you did enjoy it. Please click the subscribe button. I'm really excited about these new videos that I'm making. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Thank you.